In an ideal world, our transit network would be comprehensive, providing frequent service throughout the day between the county and region's activity centers. However, building and maintaining transit is costly. For example, the WMATA Silver Line expansion in Virginia cost $240 million per mile to construct. As a result, agencies must prioritize which transit corridors to invest in as they incrementally build out the network. Transit costs typically fall into two buckets, capital and operational costs. Capital costs are the funds used to buy and build a transit network and include the purchase land, building railroad tracks, and buying trains or buses. Operational costs are the funds used to run the system once it's constructed, including the labor costs for those operating the transit vehicles, utility or energy costs for running the service, or regular maintenance to the tracks, vehicles, or stations. Transit is supported by federal, state, and local funds, as well as funds generated from the system, known as rider fares. Public funds can come from an agency's general fund or from user taxes, such as the gas tax and tolls, sales taxes, and property or income taxes. As mentioned, rider fares are another piece of the funding puzzle. However, fares typically cover only a small portion of operating costs and are not used at all for capital costs. The fare box recovery ratio is the portion of transit operating costs covered by fares. For most transit services around the country, the fare box recovery ratio is 20 to 35% meaning that up to 80% of transit costs are not covered by rider fees. So how do we build more transit? And how do we improve existing transit? It's important to acknowledge the trade-offs associated with different planning decisions. Increased frequency along a popular corridor could come at the expense of providing a new transit route as operational costs are diverted to support existing service. Increasing fares to generate revenue could make transit inaccessible for low-income riders or encourage riders to shift back to traveling by car. Planning a rail corridor would provide faster, more efficient service, but at a much higher cost than slower, mixed-traffic bus service. Planners are conscious of these trade-offs, and we consider both the cost of our recommendations as well as the benefits they provide. We want to build a robust transit network, and over time we will. However, we need to be realistic about the constraints of the current funding environment. Corridor Forward will take a strategic look at the potential transit investments for communities along the I-270 corridor prioritize these options, and create a roadmap to achieve the highest priority projects. Learn more at montgomeryplanning.org slash corridor forward.